So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the integration of the Suprema Face Station F2 into the Breeze software. This device can also do mask detection and doesn't have an optional uh, thermal imaging backplate that you can purchase. I don't have one to hand to show you that, but I'll put a picture of one on screen now. So let's just prove that there is no face enrolled at the moment. So if I try and scan my face, it's going to keep trying to detect and then it's going to say all failed uh, because no user exists. So what I'll do is I'll do an enrollment for myself using the webcam built into this laptop. I'll delete the template and then we'll do an enrollment on device itself. And obviously the enrollment process will then transfer uh, that template to all connected devices that are on the network. The only thing to point out is that the FaceStation F2 is not compatible with the FaceStation 2 and the Face Lite in respect of templates because it uses um, a different way to calculate a template as in a, a fusion matching. So it's either use FaceStation F2 or use FaceStation 2 stroke face light on your site. So let's uh, capture on a webcam. And then literally all it's going to do is take a picture of myself and then send that to the device for enrollment. It's going to transfer that template or that image should I say which will then be converted to a template on device. And now if I present my face, as we can hear, access granted, um, and it will pop up in the bottom right hand corner. So now let's remove the template. And now I'll select capture on device rather than webcam, click scan. It's gonna beep, I'm gonna look at the device place my face into the box that's shown on screen and again the template will be transferred um, to device and all other devices on the network. As we can hear, access granted. Let's remove that template again. I'll scan one more time on webcam and then I'll show you the face mask. So let me just stop, enable face mask detection on device which I'll cover in the BioStar settings and then we'll resume. So I've enabled face mask detection and I've also changed it from sounds to voice so to give you a different scenario option. So also to point out one other thing is if I try to scan a face on webcam but there is no face present in the picture it's going to try and transfer but then you do get an error message that basically says uh, no face detected uh, and then it will say could not transfer template obviously because there's no face in the image Therefore, it can't calculate a template based upon that image. Right, so now if we scan again. It's going to transfer the templates. Done. So now if I try and present my face. Please try again. It's going to say, please try again. Please wear a face mask. Now if I put the face mask on. Please try again. As we can hear, access granted with the face mask on. So what I'll do now is we'll jump over, we'll jump over to the on-device settings and I'll just run through it real quickly because all this can be done in BioStar and then we'll go over to the PC and show more zoomed in on the software, both BreezeCS, the integration and the BioStar settings. So I'm going to quickly cover the on-screen device settings. Um, it will be brief because all of this can be set within BioStar, which I'll show you momentarily. So let's start with network. So if you haven't got DHCP on your network and you want to set uh, an IP address, you should always set a static IP, but what I mean is that out of the box it will come with DHCP enabled. And obviously if you're plugging it into a box standard switch that does not support DHCP, then you may have issues connecting, in which case you can turn off and then manually set an IP address just so you can get it connected. So that's where you would do that. So it's basically network, Ethernet, and then you can turn off the HCP, leave the port as standard, and you can set your IP address, your gateway, and your subnet mask. And then top right hand corner, click OK to apply those settings. The server should always be server to the device uh, because it's connected to BreeCS. Um, RS-405 and stuff we don't need to worry about. Authentication. So 
you've got face and then different options uh, for timeouts um, for example security levels and then right down the bottom advanced settings and then we've got the option for mask and thermal again all of this can be set in biostar but for example mask detection enabled or disabled hard or soft in the enabled mode i'm not sure exactly sure what it means by hard or soft um, but it appears when you do set it in biostar as, as far as i remember it does actually auto set to hard and the same for the thermal on or off but again all of this can be set in biostar And then the other thing you may have noticed, obviously, when I changed it to enable mask detection, I've done the sound for voice rather than uh, sort of notification prompt, so to speak. That's the display and sound. Mini timeout, for example. And then we've got down the bottom voice instruction. And then the volume that you set for that. But again, all of this can be set in Bicer. And then device is basically just options for checking the device settings, dates and times, daylight saving time, etc, etc. So I know that was brief, um, but we will cover this in Biostore in a bit more depth. So let's have a look at the settings for the Face Station F2 within Biostar version 2.8.6. This version is included in BreCS version 4.9. So we select the device from the list. The top section is the same in the respect of device, identifier, firmware upgrade, uh, date and time, etc. Uh, the same as network is the same in the respect of IP address, gateway, subnet mask, etc. Authentication is the same apart from the operation mode that has fusion matching when selecting this device. And down the bottom, previously the thermal section was built into advance, but now there is a new section for thermal and mask, uh, which is separate, separated out from advanced. Within the advanced, we can do things like display and sound as normal. We can set up triggers and actions if you want. Uh, so if you want to upload custom sounds or the sounds I provided and set triggers and actions to get feedback from the AC, you can do that, uh, do that here. And Wigan will be set to output a pulse width of 50 microseconds and an interleave of 2000 and then card ID out. And if you do want to set up custom sounds along with the triggers and actions, then you just need to enable output mode to bypass. Thermal and mask, mask detection, and obviously that mask detection would only apply to the F2 because the face light and the face station 2 don't support that. But if you're using this device, you can use, not use, use, but deny it when failed to detect, or use and allow access after leaving a log. Obviously, you would set use but deny it if you want to enforce face mask detection, and then select the detect level from strict, more strict, or most strict. The thermal camera, again, not use, use but deny access, or use, allow access, but leave a log. Again, if you want to enforce the policy, you would select use, but deny access. So therefore, if a user is not wearing a face mask or is over the threshold temperature, then access would be denied and no Wigand is sent. You can set the display to show Celsius or Fahrenheit, whether to save temperature data, uh, whether or not to show the infrared image overlay, which I think is a good idea because it gives the user visual feedback on the screen. The configuration for the camera itself in the respect of thermal can be set here, but by default normally you would leave this um, as is unless you have any issues, at which point you could speak with Suprema Technical. The region of interest, X, Y, width and height offsets can also be changed to dynamic, so therefore rather than hard setting the position of the detection area, it can dynamically detect and adjust those as needed. The Dynamic ROI is disabled by default and these are the default settings that you should leave as is unless you have an issue. The face station 2 temperature threshold I believe was 37.5 um, as its default. The face station F2 has a default of 38.0. Again you can change that here should you need to. And then whether or not you want a temperature foul sound to be, uh, um, to be shown to the user. The thermal and mask check mode, 
So again, that's check after authentication before or without. By default and the settings I would apply would be check after authentication. Therefore, the user must exist and be a valid user before mask and or thermal is checked. Uh, so therefore, if the user does not exist within the device, they will just get authentication failed. Uh, but if they do exist, and are not wearing a mask or are over the temperature threshold limit, then they'll get prompted on screen um, and an auditory noise to say that uh, basically one of these uh, sections has failed. Okay, so let's jump over to BreezeCS in the respect of the settings. So the first time that you add a face to the user, you will be asked for the Net2 system engineer password and to set up IP addresses. Just also to point out that the settings within BioStyle would obviously be done by the engineer at installation time and the end user doesn't need to go into that software and make any changes. Uh, the same is set in the system engineer password and the IP addresses. Again, this is all engineer stuff. Once that is complete, the end user would literally just select webcam or first device in the list and click scan and you're good to go. The software has now changed in the respect of when you're adding an IP address. Previously it used to add it to the list and then try to connect but because the Face Station F2 and the Face Station 2 stroke face light don't have compatible templates <clears throat> therefore it needs to check what you're about to add to make sure that it's uh, okay to add. So, for example, if you're currently using Face Station 2 and or Face Lite and you try to add the IP address of a Face Station F2, then you'll just get a, an error message down the bottom here just saying, I can't add this IP address because the templates are not interchangeable. Therefore, um, it's pointless adding it to the system because you're not going to scan your face twice on device and webcam or two separate devices. So I'll click Save. It will connect to the device and it's found it as a Face Station F2. And then it will add it to the list and say pending sync. It says pending sync, it will try to synchronize any templates that exist. So the idea behind that is that if you add a single turnstile and then you added a new turnstile and added two additional readers for in and out, as soon as you add the IP address to the list, it will send all templates to those devices to make sure that they're synchronized with the rest of the system. So now I will click save to add it. Also, if Going back to some feedback that I received from the engineers before, basically, if you're using Face Station 2 or Face Lite, or indeed the Face Station F2, and you select on device, the first IP address in the list is the one that is used for enrollment. I did have some engineers to sort of just add them, however, and then they realized, oh, oops, it should be the first one uh, as the enrollment device, and then they needed to sort of delete and then edit and change things. So now, because I've only got one IP address, I can't click the up arrow because it's already at the top of the list. But if you had more than one, you can select anything below the top and then press the up arrow key uh, button, sorry, should I say, and it will literally just pull it to the top of the list and make that the enrollment device. So now if I click save, um, it will try and synchronize any existing templates. And also a new addition is now it will also set config by default when you add the IP address. So before you used to add the IP address and then optionally set set config, which would make sure that the date and time uh, is correct as per the settings on the PC, language, region, etc., etc. But now, you, as soon as you add the IP address, it will do that automatically for you. If you're using the Phase Station 2 or the Phase Lite, then this box here will be grayed out. And it will just basically list the first IP address because those devices you can only capture on the device itself. If you're using the Face Station F2, then you get the option to capture on webcam or on device as I've previously shown. Okay, guys, uh, I think that covers everything. Uh, thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye bye.